Hello, this is Brian Mathis again with T-Jet Technologies. I'm here at Newton Crouch where we're starting up a new spreader truck. It's equipped with the T-Jet 9040 and it's a great new product from T-Jet. Let's hop in the cab and take a look. This is the new T-Jet Eros 9040. This is an automatic rate control system for liquid or granular applications. And it is also a guidance mapping system. So it's an, our all-in-one solution for variable rate applications. This is the startup screen here and it's asking us to either start a new job or, or um, continue with a job that's already in memory and we see with this drop down menu here we've got other previous jobs in memory that we could go back to and and restart. Down at the bottom we have a home key. Uh, we have a setup key that takes us into various setups such as your implement widths, your guidance modes, the GPS status, and your rate controls for to designate whether this is a sprayer or a spreader. And we see that now that we've powered up for a, a little length of time the GPS quality has gotten better and now we're, we're ready to go. There's also another screen here and this takes us into our granular application page. It would be very good information to know what application rate is programmed in, what our width is of our application, and here are our pounds per cubic foot density. And if we wanted to change any of these things, we would go into setup and we would be able to change our counters if we wanted to zero out our total applied and our acre counters. Or we could go into our job parameters. I'll go down here and enter job parameters and you can see where we have an application rate of 400 tonnage is off, um, what, what that allows us to do is if we were putting out you know, four tons to the acre, we would be able to put in tonnage, turn that from off to on, and then we would just put in four up here at the top. But let's say today we want to do an application rate of 300. We actually can just come in and put 300, hit enter, and now our application rate is 300. Our bed size is uh, 16,000 pounds so we've got that value in. Let's say we want to change our gate height to a 2 inch gate height. Just enter in 2. It's that simple. And let's say our density on our product is 70 pounds per cubic foot. We can change it to 70. And all of our basic operation parameters are entered. We now can go back to the home key and we can go to the work screen here, but before we go there, this is our fill, and it allows us to, to just add in the, the total amount there. So if, if we had depleted that value down to zero pounds, we would be able to just load it here, and, and that way we start with a full load. Let's go to our work screen, and the work screen, I can read miles per hour, Here's my 300 pound to the acre target. You see the little bullseye there indicating the target rate. And when we actually spread in the field, this becomes the actual volume. So if the rate sensor determined that I was targeting 300 and I sped up, you might see that the rate fluctuates and it goes to 295, 298, back up to 300 as it targets the actual rate. You see my loaded volume here of almost 16,000 pounds. This actually will graphically deplete and show you the remaining volume in the tank as you progress through the application. Down here I've got a granular roller, our bed chain roller RPM for monitoring purposes and I can monitor the spinner RPM during the application. So this is my application rate page and 
uh, the next thing would be to talk about the guidance part of the product. Here it's asking us to start a new job. Do you want to automatically generate the job name? Let's just say yes. And it'll give it today's date. And here we are in the field and it's ready for us to begin an application. And this would be what we would monitor through the field. But we can change what we monitor up here in this screen or in this screen here. And a couple of very neat things to, to, to add up here while we're watching guidance is what if I wanted to, to monitor my target rate over here. And let's say I wanted to monitor my actual application rate in this window over here. I would be able to read my guidance from this center mark here and would be able to watch my granular application of actual rate versus the target. So my target would have been 300. This actual rate would have told me as I speed up and slow down in the field how I've been able to control and achieve that application rate. Over here it shows us the quality of our GPS and it's showing that we have picked up 10 satellites and that we have a good quality signal. And this shows us the guidance modes and so forth. Over here we can choose to zoom in, zoom out our screen. We can choose guidance modes. Here's a straight AB, an AB curve, uh, center pivot, last pass, and next row guidance modes. And we're currently in the AB straight. And here we could actually start a boundary if we wanted to start a boundary at, before we make our route through the field. All right, this is the guidance portion of the Eros 9040. And we're traveling through the field with a little simulated demo here. And in the upper left hand corner here, I'm going to choose speed to monitor. And up here, I'll choose total applied area so that it'll accumulate my applied area as I go through the field. Now I would normally just cut on my spreader switch in this simulation. I'm actually going to get it to map by turning on this little icon and notice that it's starting to accumulate applied area. I'm going 12 and a half miles per hour in the field and since I'm going to go around the field why don't we go ahead and collect a boundary. Notice the little, this little white line indicates that a boundary is being measured and actually it doesn't know at this point whether the operator is going to drive counterclockwise or clockwise around the field but once it gets to its point of beginning it'll automatically close and tell me how many acres are in the field based on the outer edge of that swath and if we go around counterclockwise around the field the boundary will actually be calculated based on the right side of my swath and if we go around clockwise it'll be calculated on the outside which would be on the left side of my swath and this in this simulation I'm just activating and deactivating the spreader with this touch screen we could have it in attached to our own off switch and if we were spreading in the field every time we tur turn the conveyor on or off it would either map or not map. I could plot an A point for guidance. I could plot a B point. And of course he's making his turn so let's let's say no and create us a new one. There's an A point and we can drive to the other end of the field plotting a B point and there's a guideline that he's driving on right on zero meaning he's right on the guideline and we're still collecting a boundary as we go around the perimeter if you want to get rid of these icons you just make them go away if we wanted to zoom in and out this gives you a bird's eye view
and we can zoom in and I like to zoom in and get the perspective of the horizon that way I get to be get to see what's in my forward view and any area of previously applied area that might be coming up if I ever turn my spreader off it would stop mapping no applied accumulated area cut my spreader back on so with him going around the perimeter of this field it would make more sense to be in the last pass guidance mode so if we wanted to change that mode we'd simply come over here and we're now in the last pass guidance mode the reason there's no guidance prompt is we're not adjacent to a previously applied pass we're still collecting a boundary indicated by this little white line in the middle if we wanted to log a go back to point for any reason we can just plot us a point and if we wanted to steer back to it we just hit it again and it points at that point and tells us how far we are away from it we could literally turn around and drive back to it and it would steer us directly to that point if you want to get rid of the point, you just press the same button a third time and it's gone. There's also a field perspective view. And I can center up this field by... So this is a large field that he's going around. So with one key press, I can be up close or I can see my entire field. That way you see any areas that was missed or any overlaps that occurred. He's continuing to make his perimeter pass. When he comes up to this area here, he'll be adjacent to a previously applied pass and he will be able to acquire last pass guidance up here. Okay, you can see him coming up on the previous applied area. And when he comes adjacent to it, the guidance of last pass guidance will appear and tell him how far to move over. Aha, so he's 1.4 feet off and we're actually mapping a skipped area over here because he's not over far enough and of course this is just for simulation purposes to show how it would map showing us a skip bounded area we can save that boundary if he was over just a little bit closer it would have automatically closed if you were within a swath width of your starting point it'll automatically close by itself okay. right, he's coming up to this corner but you're gonna see him misapply this corner by turning and leaving an unapplied little triangle right here you'd be able to see that on the record keeping that can overlay on a Google Earth map He still needs to move over 1.5 feet to eliminate this little gap that he's creating here. As you see in the background here, we're coming up on the previously applied perimeter. And I'm going to purposely not turn the spreader off so that you can see that it will map double applied areas in a different color. So here's where we would turn the spreader off. But notice since I'm applying, it's telling on me because it is mapping this applied area as a double applied area. Now I'm going to line up on my guidance and come back out. But had I turned my spreader off, it would have not painted that area twice. So it's, it is good to know where the skips are but it's also good to know where you have double applied areas of the field. Newton Crouch and T-Jet.
working together to provide farmers better yield, improved accountability, higher profit, through quality equipment with advanced technology. Proudly made in America, Newton Crouch, Inc., a family-owned business since 1940.